Hi guys, I'm Smita and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things AI and ML related. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the fastest way in which you can become a machine learning engineer. Going from a beginner to learning machine learning to landing a machine learning engineering role and eventually becoming an ML engineer. So how exactly can we do this in the fastest timeline possible? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about exactly all the steps involved. So let's get started. The first step involves learning basic machine learning. Now, when I'm talking about basic machine learning, you, it definitely essentially means having a good understanding of what ML is and all the type of fields involved in ML and what sort of different sectors are there. So for that, you can look at some of my videos that I've made previously on what exactly is machine learning. So definitely take a look at that and as well as looking at my 100 days of ML challenge as well. So that's gonna be helpful in understanding the basics of machine learning. Once you do that, you're gonna be moving on to step number two. So step number two is looking at jobs. And you might be taken aback by that because you might be thinking, wait, I've just understood what basic machine learning is and I'm already looking at jobs. So I think this is very essential to making this whole process as most efficient and as quick as possible, but at the same time maximizing it in terms of quality as well. So we wanna start off the second step by actually jumping right into looking at jobs. And when I'm saying looking at jobs, I'm not talking about a very general search on you know, machine learning. I'm talking about specifically picking three to five different job roles within ML, which is something that you find interesting. So not being company specific. So not saying that, hey, I'm only going to be looking at this one company and the jobs uh, which are related to ML in this one company. No, I mean looking at the entire industry, but thinking very specifically on the type of technologies which are used in that specific role. So for example, you can think about you know, computer vision specific machine learning engineering roles or machine learning engineering roles which are specific to natural language processing. So these are a type of technologies that you need to focus on and you need to identify three to five different roles which you are interested in. And once you do that, we can actually understand what are the exact type of skills that you need to focus on. Before we continue with today's video, I want to introduce you guys to today's video sponsor, Satoshi Island. Satoshi Island is a Web3 project coming to life in terms of a real life island located in Manautu, where people can buy and own land on this island by buying NFTs. The island plans to be fully sustainable and everything such as groceries, food, food at restaurants, entertainment, and a lot more can be purchased with Satoshi Island coin. You also get to construct these really well-designed houses by a world-renowned architect on the land that you buy on the island. The most unique part is that you also get access to Vanuatu citizenship with their NFTs as well. It is set to launch on a tier one exchange and the links will be in the description box below, including details to all their tokenomics. Satoshi Island coin will be up for sale on OKX, which is a tier one exchange at 8 a.m. UTC on 22nd August. Once you have looked at jobs and looked at very specific skills which are required for the jobs that you plan on getting, the third step that is involved is you need to start learning advanced machine learning, which is very specific to the skills that you need to land those specific jobs that we talked about in step number two. So this right here is an example of an ML engineering position at Weights and Biases, which is a really big startup within ML. This is a more general ML engineering role. So let's look at some of the requirements so we can get to understand what exactly someone who is learning ML should be focusing on in order to be qualified for this type of role. So for in the requirements, they are looking for someone who has experience using one of the following packages, TensorFlow, Keras, and or PyTorch. Uh, also strong programming proficiency in Python, 
excellent communication experience with cloud platforms such as AWS, GCP or Azure, experience with Linux and Unix. Also a strong plus would be proficiency with some of the following packages like Hugging Face, Fast AI, Scikit-Learn, XGBoost and some other ones as well. Experience with hyperparameter optimization solutions. Now, this is a concept which you will learn in a lot of ML courses that you take. And if you look at even basic or advanced ML courses, those will definitely in involve this concept of hyperparameter tuning, fine tuning and everything else. Um, then the next thing is experience with data engineering, ML ops, tools such as Docker and Kubernetes. Um, also experience with data pipeline tools. So right off the bat, when you are looking at a bunch of job postings such as these and having at least three to five job postings, which you're very interested in and you actually plan on applying, you get to understand exactly what you should be focusing on when you are learning your machine learning, when you're taking machine learning courses or if you're reading any articles online or consuming any type of ML content, you already have a sort of compass in mind of, hey, I want to be focusing on uh, TensorFlow or Keras. I want to be focusing on making use of, you know, getting some experience with AWS, GCP. I want to be focusing on packages, using packages such as Hugging Face or Fast AI. So you already have these in mind. By having this sort of compass in mind, this sort of goal in mind, it saves you a tremendous amount of time. If you had not done this of looking at job roles to start out with, you'd just be learning ML in general with no specific focus. And you'd have to be finding your own type of things to focus on, focus on uh, without having much knowledge. So that takes a lot of time. And by doing this of, you know, looking at job postings, you save a lot of time. As you are finishing up step three of learning advanced ML, or even while you're in the middle of this step, you should be moving on to step four, which is creating your first projects, your first serious projects in machine learning. And these projects should be either using some of the frameworks that you have in mind, or either very much related to, you know, building on or working on projects, which your, the companies that you have in mind would be interested in. So this is very important. Projects are an extremely, extremely important aspect of being a machine learning engineer and applying for ML roles, because that is one of the best ways in which you can showcase your, what exactly is your skill level and what, how much work and how in depth you have gone into different aspects of machine learning. So projects are extremely important. Also, I would like to add in step four, which is that you don't need to have a lot of different projects. You just need to have either one or two projects which have went very in depth into the very specific concepts that you have picked. So don't go and try to do a lot of different projects because that would be pointless. You would not have had the time to go in depth into any one of them. Rather stick to one, one or two projects and go really in depth into the ML aspect of these projects. The next step at step number five we have is building a fantastic resume and learning how to talk about yourself and the projects that you have worked on. So this two, these two go hand in hand with also you know, landing a successful ML engineering role. You should have a very powerful uh, resume and also it's very very important that you are able to communicate really effectively on the projects that you have done so those one or two projects which you have went really in depth on you should be able to communicate really well on what exactly it is you have done what sort of uh, ml frameworks have you used what sort of algorithm have you used uh, and why have you why have you selected them and what sort of data set you have used it's very important that you are able to go in depth into that and if you have made use of some sort of cloud service like AWS or GCP it's also important that you mention that and state exactly how you have used it. Additionally building and having a really good resume is very important. I feel that 
talking about what exactly is involved in having a resume is an entirely different video. So if you guys are interested in how a good machine learning engineering resume looks like, let me know in the comment section below and I'll be making a detailed video on that. But essentially your ML, uh, ML engineering resume should showcase what you have learned and also the projects that you have worked on as well as education. So it's important that you involve these three concepts. Finally, you can start applying for the roles that you are interested in and start sending your resume. And this is a great way to also experiment based on you know the type of responses you get from hiring managers or even the type of responses you get from interviews. You can make changes to your resume as and when you like and also you get a lot of experience by applying and interviewing as well. It helps you build communication skills and helps you understand how you should be communicating effectively to showcase the skills that you have. So guys, those are the six steps involved in becoming a machine learning engineer in the fastest way possible. Let me know what you guys thought about this video in the comment section below. And if it was helpful, let me know if you guys will be following along with the steps that I've listed in this video. Thank you guys for watching and see you in my next one.